Let's continue with this uh, position, positional tolerance zone slide. Okay, in this example, we have an example of an orthographic view of a part. It's a pretty simple prismatic part with two holes and a slot in it. The holes are controlled by this feature control frame for location. Okay, so, so essentially what we have here is we have a, when we look at the um, datum reference frame here, we've got three planes, A, datum A, datum B and datum C that establish our frame of reference for the feature control frame for this position tolerance. A is the primary datum because that's pretty much where the part sits and where the holes are going to be penetrating that surface. So that's how we would tool it if we were drilling those holes. So that's perfect, perfect choice. Datum B is the longest other side longest other biggest other plane on this part and datum c is the third largest plane so we like the feature control frame um, we like we like the datum reference that's set up in the feature control frame okay our tolerance is a positional tolerance of 24 thousandths that's in a diametrical shape we have the mmc modifier too so that puts us in a position where we can calculate virtual condition so if we look at this, our, our, our minimum hole, the maximum material condition for the hole is 625 thousandths. If we were to subtract from this 24 thousandths, we would have a virtual condition of 601 thousandths. Okay, so that is our virtual condition boundary. It contains both the positional tolerance and the size tolerance, the, the virtual condition. Okay, so that's that's how this is done, and then the feature um, tolerance zone is diametrical. Now let's talk about datum feature references. Okay, they're read from right from left to right in the feature control frame: the primary first, secondary second, tertiary third. Um, and then, if there is a regardless of material boundary, it's always going to be assumed regardless of material boundary, unless an MMC or an LMC modifier is applied. Um, we need explicit datum feature references. On the, on the previous slide, we had a nice datum reference frame at three planes. Um, and in this GDT, implied datums are not permitted because they can cause confusion. They're, they're inconsistent, and the um, um, interpretation of which is can be um, in error. So we, we don't want to use implied datums at all. Okay, so basic dimensions and true positions. So basic dimensions define the location of the features that have the position tolerances. And theoretically perfect, and they have no tolerance in and of themselves. That's what we're showing here. These are the basic dimensions. They're defining the perfect or true location of these holes. And they don't really have any tolerances in and of themselves. The tolerance for the hole location is defined in the feature control frame. Okay, so true positions defined by basic dimensions, exact and related to specific datum reference frames, like the previous example. We and this example right here, we have these, you know, three planes, and that establishes our datum reference frame, and and it does not indicate the feature must be perfectly located because, you know, we we have the tolerance applied here, so that that lot, that gives us our tolerance on that hole. Now here's what 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 um, the relationship to the datum reference frame. Okay, so the position tolerance must include datum feature references, and exceptions are when to when tolerance features act as primary datums. Other features are located from. Uh, we'll talk about that much later. Um, datum reference frames provide origin and coordinate system. Okay, so in this case we have a datum reference frame. This was from the previous example. Here's our datum reference frame A. B and C. Um, we have our datum A, plane A. Here's our plane for datum plane B. And then here's the plane for datum plane C. The part is, you know, located by the high points of those datum surfaces. And the true position is defined based on that. Okay. So, so really, it, it picks up the high spots. So you're picking up the overall datums of these parts to be able to check these position holes. Um, we're going to have a really good slide on this later in, in, in the lesson that talks about the um, um, advantages of these positional tolerances over, over just, you know, coordinate tolerances. And, and it's really telling. Okay, so regardless of feature size, 
when no material condition modifier is shown. You know, the, the, the regardless of feature size is the default. The specified tolerance value remains constant regardless of the feature size. Um, yeah, when you're using the MMC modifier and you've got virtual condition, you actually pick up bonus tolerances as you deviate from MMC when you use the MMC modifier. Um, you don't have that luxury here with regardless of feature size. You know, regardless of feature size, you don't pick up any extra tolerance. And it creates an inner and outer boundaries. And it's typically for applications where or the holes have zero clearance. Or you're trying to press fit a pin in location. So, you know, MMC modifiers are really great if you're trying to assemble parts that are going to fit. But if you're trying to precisely locate a hole that a, that a um, pin is going to be pressed into, then, then no, you cannot use MMC modifiers for that. And then what we're showing here is we're showing the, our um, size dimension here and then our feature control frame and then what that tolerance zone looks like. Okay, And that tolerance zone stays the same regardless of where the, what size the hole is actually produced at. Okay, let's continue with regardless of feature size. Okay, so this is the same example. Um, we have our dimension, we have our uh, position tolerance applied to the dimension. Um, when we make the hole at the MMC condition, we've got this 25 thousandths allowable tolerance. And then again, if we make this hole at the LMC condition, we still have this 25 um, thousandths allowable positional tolerance. And then this one just shows what the inner and the outer boundaries are. So if we came out here to this LMC size, we would be somewhere way out in there. That's the outer boundaries. And then the hole will always fall outside of this 475 inner boundary. So that's essentially what happens. So, you know, when you got an MMC size, you, you really establish these inner and outer boundaries for, for the, um, the hole. Okay, so again, maximum material condition. A specified tolerance value applies when feature is produced at MMC. Okay, so the difference here is we apply the MMC tolerance to it. It creates an inner virtual condition and an outer resultant condition boundary for holes. And it's typically used for clearance. Okay, so here's what, what we got the example of the MMC modifier here applied to that same dimension. When we make the hole at the MMC condition. We have 500 thousandths and that gives us our minimum tolerance of 25 thousandths allowable true position. But if we were to take that hole and manufacture it up to a size of 510 thousandths, we get an extra 10 thousandths um, positional tolerance. Okay, because MMC, MMC conditions in GDT, what you're trying to do is ensure that your parts are going to fit, is really what that does. Okay, and then these would be the resultants of the inner and the outer boundaries. Okay, and if you notice that 510, well, if we go back two slides, you know, 510 LMC size was your outer boundary for the, for the RFS. When we're sitting here, you know, here's our 510 boundary, but, you know, the outer is going to be the resultant condition. It's going to be actually the LMC plus the, that tolerance. So it takes you all the way up to 545. Um, least material condition. Now, least material condition is not used as often as, as MMC. And essentially what you're trying to do with least material condition is you're really trying to establish um, a minimum edge distance or something like that. Um, and, and it gets illustrated here pretty well. Okay, so here we're using the LM, LMC modifier. You know, so when we're at MMC, we've got all of this tolerance here. And when we're at LMC, we've kind of reduced that tolerance. Um, and, and so really what we're doing is when you've got this virtual condition on the outside, what you're trying to assure with LMC is that you don't get any closer to the edge of the part than what's shown here. Okay, that's why LMC modifiers are used. It's just to assure that your part doesn't get too thin on an edge is typically how that's done. And, and, and this is why we say in this slide here, typically for applications where edge distance or remaining material is a concern. 
So if you had a condition where you were worried about how thin this edge got right here, that was a perfect application for an LMC modifier. Okay, I'm going to stop this slide here and pick this up with the proof on the next slide. Thank you.